that's our constraint. This is our constraint. What function are we trying to uh, minimize? D squared is equal to? And the origin's a nice point to work with because you're subtracting zero, yeah. And if you minimize the square, you're minimizing the distance, correct? So we're, we can really just minimize this, this squared function. So we're going to call this, I don't know, g of x, y, z. Okay. And we'll call this one right here, we'll say this is f of x, y, z. So we know that the partial with respect to x is going to be y squared z cubed. And the partial with respect to y is going to be 2xyz cubed. And I like keeping things in alphabetical order. fz is going to be y squared z squared. squared. Nice. And we know those are going to equal to lambda times 2x, 2y, and lambda 2z. OK, so what do we do now? Solve for lambda. Solve for lambda, and then hope. You, you solve for lambda, and then you really hope that lots of stuff cancels, right? If stuff doesn't cancel, what happens to your ability to complete this problem? It chances. <laughs> exponentially, exponentially just go through the floor, right? They, these can be very terrible very quickly. But we end up with, we end up with, we solve for lambda on all of these. So y squared. Yeah, y squared, over yeah. Z cubed over 2x. That's going to be equal to. 2xyz cubed no, over. Oh, no, uh, what? Over cancel the y, I'm not canceling anything yet. Sorry. Equals 3xy squared z squared over 2z. So yes, we can simplify this a little bit before we start drawing our. You know, <coughs> that cancels. Nope, we did isolate it. I just isolated lambda and set them all equal to each other. No, not always. Sometimes, sometimes that's what we did yesterday. But sometimes we isolate x, y, and z, and that is helpful. Sometimes you're going to x, y, and z, write them in terms of lambda. And sometimes you're going to isolate lambda. Either way, like if you can find lambda, that's hugely helpful. If you can find x and y and z, you're done. So it depends. In this case, what do we end up with? We end up with y squared z cubed over. 2x is equal to xz cubed, x z cubed over 1. And that cancels with that. You're left with 3 halves x xy squared z. No, no, we're not trying to work on all of these at once. We're trying to look at them in pairs. So for example, let's look at this pair right here. If we look at that pair right there and we cross multiply, we end up with y squared z cubed is equal to 2x squared what? z cubed. And oh, look at that. Does something nicely. That's gone, right? So you end up with y squared is equal to 2x squared. So let's just leave that like that. Now, if we look at one of the other pairs, let's look at this one right here. We have xz cubed is equal to 3 halves xy squared z. What? What ends up get, what, what goes away? The x's cancel, right? That turns into a square. That goes away. So what do you end up with? Z squared is equal to to y squared. And then what's the last pairing we could do? We could take the out, the first and the third. Yeah, exactly. So we end up with all oh, this uh, y squared z cubed is equal to. 2x times 3 over 2x. I'm just doing it all out step by step. Do some things nicely cancel. The 2 cancels, right? Y squared. The y squares cancel on both sides, right? That turns into a square, and that's gone. So what are you left with? Z squared is equal to what? 3x squared. Well, it's true. I mean, look, yeah, z squared, but then you end up with this relationship right there. Okay, so now that we have this, what do we always have to remember? What's our initial, what, what, what are we trying to minimize or maximize? This distance, this distance formula right here, correct? We want that one to be minimized. Is that correct? We also know it has to abide by this constraint. So what should we do? Let's plug into this f, the original constraint. So x y squared z cubed equals what? x y squared z cubed is equal to what? 2. Let's turn it all into what? What do you want to turn it into? Z squared? Want to write it in terms of Z? Can we do that? Write it in terms of X? Can we do that? Okay. So it's going to be X. What is Y squared? 
2x squared. And what's z cubed? You have to raise this to the 3 halves, right? To the what? 3 halves. So you end up with z. This implies that z cubed is equal to 3 to the 3 halves times x to the to the third. So it end up with 3 to the 3 halves x to the equals 2. What cancels on both sides? The 2's go away. And you're left with 3 to the 3 halves x to the what? Sixth, Sixth right? Because there's 3, 4, 5, 6 equals what? 1. Thank you. That's important. Yeah, 3 plus 2 plus 1. So you end up with x to the 6th is equal to 3 to the negative 3 over 2. So you take the what root? That's an even root, so you have to, be, you have to make sure it's plus or minus. So x is equal to plus or minus 3 to the negative 3 halves to the what power? To the 1 6. So that's x is equal to plus or minus 3 to the what? Negative 1 fourth. So x is equal to plus or minus 1 over what? Three to the fourth, which is what? <laughs> wow, it's amazing. You guys cruise, <laughs> cruise through the calculus, and then I just no. Three to the negative one fourth. Okay, so it's the like that. <laughs> what does it turn into? I'm being really terrible today. One over three to the. So that's equal to one over. The fourth root of three. Okay, so now we have to go back and take a look at this. We got x is equal to one of those, right? Uh, we know that y squared is equal to two x squared. These are all squareds, right? So how many different possible answers are we going to get? There's going to be eight of them, right? That each can be plus or each can be positive or negative. What? Yeah, you have to, yeah, this is something you have to keep in mind, right? Keep <laughs> this in mind. So let's get one of them. If we keep this in mind right here, we have to keep in mind very carefully, right? Because X and Z both have to be the same what? Uh, same sign, uh, right? Because yeah. Y squared is always positive. Assuming that they multiply together to get positive or negative 2, we have to make sure that X and Z have the same sign. So they're both positive or both negative, so therefore we've automatically limited what we have. So we just have an x value, so we know that, what's the relationship between x and z? Do we have that? z squared is equal to 3x squared. z squared is equal to 3x squared. So uh, 3 times 3 to the negative 1 fourth squared, what's that going to be? Times 3 to the what? Negative one half, right? What's that equal? What's three times three to the negative one half? Three to the what? Three to the one half, exactly. So this right here is z, right there. So they they have to be. So, is it plus or minus? Yeah, it will be. It will be. Yeah. So hold on. So we have the x value. The first x value I have was three to the negative. So it's positive three to the negative fourth. And if that's positive, what does the other? What does z have to be? Three to the one half, right? Is that correct? Okay. Or, or what? Both or they have to both be what? Negative. negative. Or they're or the what? Oh, that's z squared, right? Z squared is equal to that, right? So it has to be the square root of that. So it's going to be three to the what? Yes, z cubed is in there. That is correct. In the original constraint, it's z cubed. But what we're saying is, look, we know that z, we know that x squared, right here. Sorry, where is it? We know that z squared is equal to three times x squared. So therefore, we know that z squared is equal to this. So what does that make z equal to? T to the what? That makes a lot more sense actually. Three to the one fourth. So they're or they're both negative, right? Comma, and that's a negative one fourth. They just blend together comma 3 to the 1 4. So they're both positive or both negative, right? Is that correct? OK, so now we have to find out the y value. What is y equal to? y squared is equal to 2x squared. So y squared is equal to 2 times 
3 to the 1 fourth squared, so that's 2 times 3 to the what? It's negative Thank you. So what's that going to be? Negative a half like that? So therefore, what's y going to be equal to? Ooh, the square root, right? So it's going to be 2 to the what? 2 to the 1 half. 3 to the negative 1, negative 1 fourth, right? And it can be positive or negative, right? But look, it can be positive or negative for either one, right? So how many answers do we now have? Four. Four. So if we take this and put this, sorry, i got to see if I can surround this. A lot of radicals. That's just how it is. Take this, and it goes right there. We take this, and we make it what? Negative, right? I guess I don't really need the parentheses, but I did anyway. Oh, that could be the other one. So hold on. So is this one or 3 to the negative 1 fourth, comma, 3 to the 1 fourth? And what's the next one going to become? Negative 3 to the negative 1 fourth, comma, yeah. negative 2 to the 1 half, 3 to the negative 1 fourth, like this, comma, 3 to the 1 fourth. And then this one finally is going to be 2 to the 1 half. So that should be Thank you. Very specific. No, that's very specific. You're very good. So we have four possible values for our mins and maxes. Is this question asking where they are or what the mins and maxes are? The minimum distance, right? The minimum distance? How do we do that? Find the gradient. Okay. So fx is going to be what? Y plus Z, just Y plus Z, right? And FY is going to be what? Z, and FZ is going to be what? Y plus, well, X plus, I'm keeping it up, but I order. Okay, so we have the partials. Now what do we do? What's the equation for a plane that we worked with? Yeah, hold on. Z minus Z naught, yep, is equal to what? Yep. Minus fx of x naught y naught, right? Yeah. Times what? Minus x naught, minus x naught plus what? Y, y x naught y naught times y minus y naught. y naught. Exactly. Okay. Z so z minus yeah one is equal to f of x evaluated one, which is what? Two times x minus one, one plus y minus 1. So what is that? That is the what? That is a tangent plane, right? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. That right there is the tangent plane. Are we okay with that, everybody? Yeah. We're okay with that. I think that's pretty good. That's nice. Equals t and z minus 1 over 2 is equal to t. So if you want to translate this, what do you get? x is equal to? 2t plus 1. 2t plus 1. y is equal to what? 2t plus, <laughs> 2T plus 1. And, oh, look at that. Very nice. Okay, but here's the thing. We wrote it as a vector equation to begin with. So what does this translate into? This translates into 1, 1, 1. And try to erase this. 1, 1, 1 plus what? <laughs> plus t times what? 2, 2, 2. What? Yes, you're absolutely right because it just has to be directly proportional. You're absolutely right. So basically, what can you can replace? Yes, if you want to get big and nice, you can change that to like any a value you want, as long as all of them were changed to that. You're absolutely right. But this would be the more I don't. You would say um, logical connection. I would be more. I'd be happier with you if you didn't take the opportunity to change that. Like, yes, you could make it x equals pi t plus i plus one. You know, and anytime you see the word, anytime you see uh, negative one, you do e to the pi i. You know, instead. Woo! And that just makes everything nice. Okay. So let's just the unit vector, right? What is u going to be? One over what? One over five. 
<laughs> what we should just do is listen to Jay, you know. I was like, I don't understand. Oh, he's just way ahead of us. So that's our unit vector, right? And we know that our directional derivative of f of xy is going to be equal to what? It's the gradient of f of at times what? Not times, but dot the unit vector, right? Correct? So in this case, what is our gradient going to be? Well, it's f of x at, we want it at what point? 1, 5, correct? 1, 5. So what should we really find out first before we try to do too many steps at once? How about fx? Right, the partials? Exactly. So what's the partial of x going to be? Correct. Fy is going to be what? Negative 2y. So therefore, we want to find the gradient at 1, 5. What's that going to be? 1, comma, negative 10. Is that correct? Right? So what are we dotting now? We're dotting 1, negative 10 times what? Dot 3 over 5. 3, negative 4, but what's in front of it? Is it OK if we just put the 1 fifth in the front? <coughs> Can you do that? Yes. Yeah, absolutely. So what do you end up with? 1 fifth times 3 plus 40. So you end up with what? 43 over 5. Let me just check that real quick. Differentiate f of x minus what? Y squared minus y squared. How do you do, mean, how do you do that? Or like, um, so we want to do this first. We have a partial of z with respect to what? X. x. Yeah. OK, you can totally do this. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so if you're doing this, what happens to that? Zero. Zero. It's 0. It's a constant, right? So you're doing f of that. Do you agree? OK. So. There is an x on the inside, so what rule are we really we're going to be using in addition to differentiating? The chain rule, right? So it's going to be f prime of x squared minus y squared times what? 2x. Times 2x, exactly. OK, so now what else do we have to figure out? dz, not d, partial like this. What do you end up with? Oh, yes, thank you, thank you. Yes, I am. 1 minus what? 2y times f prime of x squared minus y squared, right? So now what do you just need to do? You're, you're checking y times x plus x times z dy, right? That's going to be y times z dx is, uh, what is that? f prime of x squared minus y squared times 2x. And what are you adding? To, you're adding to it plus x times 1 minus 2y times f prime of. So when you put this together, what do you end up with? 2xy f prime of x squared minus y squared, right? Plus, uh -huh, that's plus what? Plus x minus 2xy f prime blah 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 blah. What everything cancels, it's gone and it equals x. Voila.